Tonight on NJTV News, the governor has signed and sealed the bill buying time for Atlantic City to stave off a state takeover. Now all Atlantic City has to do is deliver. Why aren't Atlantic City businesses elated over the stay of execution? Might they fear 150 days is too short a time to dig out of debt? Why can an engineer with so many DWIs he's lost his driver's license still be allowed to operate an NJ Transit train full of passengers? And start your engines. The summer driving season's in full swing. We'll tell you why your ride to the shore is a little smoother and a lot cheaper. You'll meet a cohort of kids learning the art of the deal and then some at a business incubator for the swing set set. And less barking but more howling. Some canines are better at being predators than house pets. They're a cross between dogs and wolves. Emphasis on wolves. Those stories and more next on NJTV News. Major funding for NJTV News provided in part by Barnabas Health. Life is better healthy. Online at BarnabasHealth.org. Wells Fargo. Together we'll go far. And Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey. An independent licensee of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association. Live from the Agnes Barris NJTV studio at 2 Gateway Center in Newark. This is NJTV News with Mary Alice Williams. Hello, thank you for joining us. The Atlantic City deal is a done deal. After months of wrangling and rancor meant to prevent the gambling capital from going bankrupt and taking the state down with it, Governor Christie signed the compromise legislation giving Atlantic City 150 days to get its finances in order or submit to a state takeover. The signing didn't derail the governor's annual field trip to Jenkinson's Pier to check out the shape of the shore and to spend a few minutes with Michael Hill. Christie, Governor Christie taking his annual stroll in the Jersey Shore boardwalk, greeting and posing with holiday weekend tourists and looking as if he's a candidate campaigning again. Even though presumptive Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump says he's looking for a running mate with executive experience, the governor told us in this one-on-one -on -one interview. Oh, we'll see. I, you know, like I said, I'm running the transition uh, for Donald and, and, uh, and it's, a, it's a big job, and, but one I'm really excited and enthusiastic about, about tackling. Uh, uh, and as far as the vice presidency, that's one person's choice. Uh, and we'll see what he decides to do. Will you put your name up for it, though, as you the, the put, transition team? You don't put your name up. You know, you don't put your name up. Anybody who puts their name up for the vice presidency doesn't get it. So you don't put your name up. If the, It's not like I've, Donald and I have known each other for 14 years. It's not like he'll forget me. If he decides that I'm the best person for him, that's great. And if he doesn't, I have a big task to do for him um, and for the country, and I'll be happy to do that and honored to do it. Do you want to be vice president? Uh, I, I don't think anybody wants to be vice president. I think what happens is if a presidential candidate comes to you and asks you to take that on, then you sit and talk with your family and decide whether it's the right thing for you. The governor came here to check out the beginning of the summer tourism season for the Jersey Shore. The beach replenishment we've done and the work we've done with the Army Corps of Engineers is making a huge difference on the beaches up and down the state. The folks here on Jenkinson's boardwalk say they're anticipating a terrific tourism season based on what the hotel and motel industry is telling them. They said they're really ahead of where they were last year in bookings, so we're very optimistic. We're hoping Mother Nature has decided to get on board. It's great, and I think that's part of the economy in New Jersey. I mean, we, you know, we're, we're our unemployment's now down to 4.7 percent. We're below the 5 percent national average. More people are working in New Jersey today than any time in our history. That's all great for the economy, and when the economy's good, the tourism industry is great. The governor told NJTV News he will sign the financial recovery legislation for Atlantic City. Here's the good thing about Atlantic City. The good thing is that Atlantic City and the private sector is doing really well. Casino revenue is up. Non-gaming revenue is up. Up. It's the government that screwed up. And that's why the legislation that the, the legislature passed yesterday that I'll be considering today um, will give Atlantic City a chance over the next five months to be able to get their act together. If they don't, then I'll come in and take over Atlantic City and I will make the changes that are necessary so that people won't be even talking about Atlantic City a year from now. So the legislation that you're talking about, does it meet some of the requirements that you had going forward with Atlantic it, it City? It meets almost all the requirements that I put forward. I mean, the only real difference in the legislation is giving them 150 days Days rather than doing it immediately. And so uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, to work signing that legislation later today. And when does it kick in? It starts today. 150 days starts counting today. They got 150 days to fix their own house. If they can't, on day 151, I will be there to fix the house. Are you confident that they will do it on their own? I don't know. It's up to them. I mean, I offered them this deal a year ago, and they turned it down. So they said because it couldn't be done. On the Jersey Shore, Michael Hill, NJTV News.
It's not surprising that Governor Christie's prediction of boom times on the boardwalk hasn't spread south to Atlantic City, where the legislative wrangling to prevent bankruptcy took a toll. Brenda Flanagan reports. This is the place to be. Atlantic City is open for business. Just to make sure, Mayor Don Guardian waded into the waves and symbolically unlocked the ocean for summer tourists. After a winter of financial and legislative discontent, politics can make strange bedfellows. We're glad that uh, we were able to reach that compromise that we've been looking for with the Assembly and the Senate, and we uh, understand the governor is satisfied as well, so it's great to be part of the profiles in courage in New Jersey. It'll take some courage. The Hail Mary rescue plan gives Guardian just five months to avert a total state takeover by slashing the city's budget while also reassuring high rollers and convention goers that booking a gig here is a safe bet. I don't think it's going to do anything. Why not? It's just nothing, nothing ever gets done in the city. Everything goes backwards. At Papa T's Boardwalk Pizza, the manager thinks it's just delaying the inevitable. I've been here 30 years and I know what this, how this city operates. I would like to see the people who are running in Vegas come down here and take over. That's what I would like to see. They really know what they're doing out there. In the cage at Irene's Gifts, hermit crabs are moving, but the shop merchandise isn't. What has business been like? Oh, it has been terrible this year. The last year has been terrible for everybody. I guess everybody strangled here. One business group estimated hotel room night bookings here might be off 40 percent, but the local Chamber of Commerce says with only eight casinos left, business in Atlantic City trended up in the first quarter, and the city has visibly increased police presence. In the marketplace, we had to make adjustments, but I'm very comfortable, uh, I think, as is the marketplace, that safety, security, all those things will be in place for the guests. We're going to be prepared to have conventions come to town and visitors. I don't think we'll skip a beat. But a couple of possible setbacks loom. Union workers might strike over benefit reductions at the Taj Mahal, and voters might approve two new casino gaming licenses in North Jersey, stealing customers. It's right in the sweet spot of our customer base, right? So our, our best customers, our most uh, um, dedicated and loyal customers come from North Jersey. Uh, they, they have the biggest bank rolls. They would probably stay in North Jersey, and it would hurt us dramatically. So. Would you lose casinos? here? Well, our study says three to five. Clearly, uh, at a minimum, I think there'd be a three casino closure. So under sunny skies, Atlantic City starts a tough slog, scrambling to win back the business it needs to succeed and the financial redemption it needs to survive. In Atlantic City, I'm Brenda Flanagan, NJTV News. Teaming up to promote safe alternatives to drunk driving down the shore. That tops tonight's Garden State Express. Our first stop, Lake Como, where patrons bent on bending an elbow can get free Uber rides, but they have to take a breathalyzer test first. To celebrate the start of summer, Bar A has set up a kiosk tonight where those who've over imbibed can blow through a straw and test their blood alcohol level. If they blow over the legal limit, they'll receive a code for an up to $30 Uber ride free, courtesy of Uber New Jersey and the John R. Elliott Hero Campaign, which is also signing up designated drivers. They get free soft drinks. Next to Millville, where the free ride's over for truck driver Melvin Ralph. Port Authority police say they pulled him over for crossing the Gothels Bridge with an unreadable front license plate. They say purposely bent up to avoid the toll and a rear license plate not even registered to his truck. Easy Pass records show Ralph racked up 71 toll violations there and at the George Washington Bridge and nearly $14,000 in unpaid tolls. Ralph was driving with a revoked Easy Pass device and an invalid driver's license. They've thrown the book at him and impounded his truck. Finally, Jackson, where they put the brakes on the new highly promoted Joker ride at Six Flags Great Adventure only an hour after its official unveiling. The 4D free fly coaster jammed mid-ride. It took 15 minutes to get two stuck riders off. The park president said it took just a few minutes to adjust the dampeners that control how the cars flip over. And even though he says no one's safety was ever at risk, they swapped out the stuck car.
Disappointed season ticket holders got passes to ride the ironically named Joker at a later date. And that's our Garden State Express for Friday, May 27th. Something up in your town? Tip us off. One year ago, a horrific Amtrak derailment outside Philadelphia killed eight passengers and injured more than 200. Just 10 days ago, the National Transportation Safety Board found the engineer was distracted by radio chatter about trouble ahead. Operating a train requires judgment, and split-second reaction time. Much like driving a car, there's no room for error. So how is it that an NJ Transit engineer who's had so many DWIs he's lost his driver's license is still pulling train passengers? Aaron Delmore reports. It's basic New Jersey common sense that if you are not able to operate uh, your car, you should not be entrusted with the safety and the lives of thousands of residents of New Jersey each and every day. Elected officials and commuters are reeling on the heels of a report that a New Jersey transit engineer with multiple DWIs and an actively suspended driver's license is still operating commuter trains. And knowing that every single week, hundreds of thousands of New Jerseyans are on trains to know that one of them was being conducted by someone who had a shown pattern of abuse of substances um, that, has, that was seen by us as not being worthy to drive a car, they should not be driving uh, a train. New Jersey Transit engineer Thomas Brochart lost his driver's license for 10 years due to repeated drunken driving charges. And yet, he is still legally allowed to operate a train. New Jersey Transit says its hands are tied due to weak federal regulations. But the senators say that's not true. They don't need a new law to take action. They said that existing law is just the floor, not the ceiling. And we've confirmed that while the Federal Railroad Administration sets minimum standards, railroads like New Jersey Transit have the discretion to pass tougher guidelines and set company policies that could prevent these situations from occurring. New Jersey senators are introducing a measure to create a new federal standard. Anyone with a DWI or a suspended driver's license due to a DWI will be prohibited by federal law from operating a train. The bill is simple because this is a common sense issue. If you're, if you have DWIs, you don't need to be behind the wheel. I don't even know if trains have wheels, but you don't need to be driving anything. It makes me question the um, ethics of the of the train system a little bit. Understand this: we have had disastrous, disastrous loss of life, crashes, injuries that have resulted on rail lines because of the errors of conductors. While lawmakers said the engineer should be relieved of his position, they didn't rule out reassigning him. For its part, NJ Transit told NJTV News it's working with the Federal Railroad Administration and union partners and welcomes efforts to tighten regulations governing engineers. Quote, we are checking the status of locomotive engineer driver's licenses on a daily basis. We will also continue to review those records when individual engineers are due for recertification and keep in place New Jersey Transit's long-standing policy of administering random drug and alcohol tests to all 7,400 safety-sensitive employees. This issue is not about any individual. We all recognize that there are numerous people in our communities who have substance abuse issues. This issue is strictly about safety, the safety of every man, woman, and child who rides New Jersey Transit. New Jersey Assemblyman Nicholas Chiarvelotti introduced legislation at the state level in conjunction with the bill by Senate President Steve Sweeney to clarify and strengthen the law. Kiar Velotti is hoping for a vote by the end of June. In Secaucus, I'm Erin Delmore, NJTV News.
The 44 day long Verizon strike may be coming to an end after one of the longest and largest strikes in at least four years. According to a CWA source, Verizon and its two unions have an agreement in principle that will put 39,000 landline employees back to work as early as next week. The U.S. Secretary of Labor reportedly brokered the four-year deal. The terms have not been disclosed, but the Communication Workers of America heralds the first-ever contract for Verizon retail store workers, saying the deal will improve the standard of living for workers and create good jobs. New Jersey is big business, but government data shows it also has 766,323 small businesses. And that doesn't count the young single owner startups abounding in the tech sphere. If you've ever wondered where they get their start, you might look into your local elementary school, one of 100 where kids are learning the business of business. Brianna Venosi reports. These are mini moguls in the making. It's called BizTown, and on this day, 85 fifth graders from Orange Elementary Schools are taking charge of companies along a simulated Main Street at Junior Achievement of New Jersey. The purpose of Junior Achievement is to inspire and prepare young people to succeed in a global economy. We do this through the eyes and the lives of volunteer role models through our business education partnerships. Students elect a mayor, choose CEOs, and work together as executives, small business owners and entrepreneurs. They make transactions and handle real work problems. It helps young people understand financial literacy, career readiness, understanding the different careers in the, in the different businesses, brings to life what their future is going to hold. The CEO of a company, you have to make sure everybody's doing their job and you have to make sure they're doing it correctly. So it's a lot of work because if, if your business fails, they all put it on you. So you have to make sure everything runs smoothly. Junior Achievement is a free program for all New Jersey students. After they complete 13 hours of lessons in class, they head to Main Street to put their skills to work. It's fun. Why? Because you get to live the life of an adult. Carl Jones is the financial manager for this Investors Bank branch. A lot of people come and you have to write down their names and then take their money and then give them money. So you have to do math too. This is um, probably an experiment why your parents are always tired when they come home from work. We impact 62,000 students annually across the state of New Jersey from kindergarten through 12th grade. This particular program will be reaching 5,000 students this year. It's all made possible by corporate sponsors, the newest to Main Street, Investors Bank. I think it's such an important thing for them to learn at this stage because at this stage they really become, they're very impressionable and giving them the opportunity to learn how to save money will impact them for the rest of their life. About halfway through the day, all the teams stop and hold a business meeting, much like they would in the real world, to assess what's working and what's not. So we see what, what we're doing to making a difference and what can we do to make more of a difference. Daniel Guaman is part of the Community Assistance Center. We work um, all day giving jars to all the businesses we see. We find and we talk with our, our dear workers and we find for the families who are in need. Future leaders and business owners in the making, but for now, they'll just enjoy being kids. In Edison, I'm Brianna Venosi, NJ TV News. One of the state's key economic engines is tourism. It's been on a six-year growth spurt, hitting nearly $43.5 billion last year, directly or indirectly supporting 512,000 jobs, almost a tenth of our total employment. But it can't keep growing if tourists can't get where they're going. The organization that tracks travel is AAA. Its director of government relations is Kathleen Lewis. Thank you for being here. Happy to be. Uh, tell me what we're seeing in terms of increased traffic this weekend. Well, we're going to see lots of people on the roadways. We ask people if they're going to take trips of 50 miles or more. So we're going to anticipate that there's going to be close to a million New Jerseyans traveling with 38 million across the country. A lot of those are going to come through our state because you get all those folks to the shore, Pennsylvania, New York. We're going to see a lot of them. 
And what about the cheap Jersey gas? Oh, absolutely. The lower gas prices have really encouraged people to take that extra road trip, either a long road trip like we're seeing in our numbers, or even those quick extra trips to the shore that New Jerseyans are going to take. It doesn't feel as though gas prices are low because they're the highest they've been this year, but they're actually the lowest in, what, 11 years, Absolutely. Right? We are at the lowest point in the decade. Um, if you look at where we were two weeks ago, it doesn't seem very cheap, but if you think about the fact that we were at 254 a year ago, that price at 214 seems like a bargain. Also, New Jersey Transit Train is adding extra trains for this weekend. Will that continue throughout the summer? Weekend? I think some of it will continue. I know that they're looking to do more one-seat rides right to the shore, so I think that those are going to continue. And the frequency this weekend, I think, is going to really help to get people in that, in that um, habit of going to the shore that way. This is the second year that the nightmare construction to widen the turnpike has been over. So we've had time to measure what effect the wider turnpike has had. So I will tell you, last year after Memorial Day, we saw a little bit of an increase, and I got people asking me, why was there so much less people on the roads? There weren't less people. <laughs> it was just easier to get to the shore. That change in the commute makes people think, you know what? I can go to the shore that extra day. It's sunny. It's nice out. Gas is cheap. I'm not going to have a headache. So it really helped get people there for that extra day trip and that extra weekend. What are the most popular Memorial Day weekend destinations? Well, you know, here in New Jersey, we think of the shore, but we have a number of places where people are going. They like to get to Florida. They like to go away to the islands. But here in New Jersey, we hope that they go to the shore, and we hope that folks are coming from Pennsylvania, from New York, and the surrounding areas. What do you recommend for travelers heading into the Memorial Day weekend? So first and foremost, make sure your car is ready. Get your tires checked, get your fluids checked. The battery. The battery, and the battery is a big deal when it comes to heat. We don't think about it quite so much, but overheating becomes a big issue. So you wanna make sure that that's ready. After that, if you're taking a longer trip, make sure you take frequent breaks. Take a break every 100 miles. Stretch your legs, get some caffeine, make sure that you're not drowsy while you're on the roadways. And most importantly, put your phone away. Do not drive distracted. Give it to a passenger so that they can be in charge of it and your eyes don't wander. Or just put it in the glove department, right? Exactly. All right. Kathleen Lewis, thank you very much for being with us and happy Memorial Day to you. Thank you. Have a happy holiday. They are the stuff of fairy tales, charismatic, highly social, extremely intelligent. 99% of their DNA is the same as that of a standard house pet, but the other 1% is sheer wild wolf. Maddie Orton reports on wolf dogs among us. Michael Hodanish has to turn down three or four requests each week asking him to take on a new wolf dog at his sanctuary, Howlingwood's Farm. There just isn't the room. Much of the time, the story is this. The breeder says, oh, it'll be fine. It'll, it'll be a great house pet. As they're puppies, they're fine. Well, they get to be seven, eight months old, large enough where, you know, their adult teeth are in, they can cause damage, and all of a sudden they become problems. They're gonna just start roaming the house, they'll grab the garbage and they won't wanna give it back to you. You know, they'll, they'll find the sofa cushions and play tug of war with them. Hodanish says that's because wolf dog hybrids that are more wolf than dog are almost like having livestock. Wolf dogs are categorized by content, low, medium, and high. The higher the content, the more wolf they have in them. Napawi here is a high content wolf dog. Hodanish says medium and high content wolf dogs are not meant to be house pets. Still, he unknowingly adopted a stray one years ago and fell in love. That's when he became aware of the fate that meets many of these animals. I, I learned that the animal shelters when they get wolf dogs, um, or even if they're not really wolf dogs, that the people even say they're part wolf, the shelters will euthanize the animal, um, even if it's perfectly uh, good temperament, uh, pet quality, they, they, they still euthanize it, I guess for liability reasons. The result of his findings? Howling Woods Farm. The shelter sits on 10 acres of land and holds six wolf dogs at the moment that are available for adoption. It also has 10 permanent ambassador wolf dogs. These are the animals visitors meet on tours and Hodanish takes to scout meetings, libraries and senior centers for presentations. We're primarily uh, an educational 
uh, facility. We teach people that, that wolves are not the mean, vicious animals that we've grown up to learn through fairy tales when we were kids. Of course, there are people who want to adopt these wolf dogs too. Hodanish says it can sometimes take a few years to find the right home. For the high contents, you know, we recommend fences that are, you know, eight, eight foot or higher, dig guards uh, so that they can't dig underneath the fence. That's all on top of having another canine. Wolves are pack animals after all, and being okay with feeding them their high protein diet. A raw diet you know, such as, um, you know, chicken, beef, or pork. And there's also the matter of waking up the neighbors. So for the majority of us who will never own a wolf dog, Hodanish is happy to provide the experience of meeting one in person, even if visitors can be a little trepidatious at first. But it only takes about, you know, 30 to 40 seconds, you know, when the animals come up and start licking their hands and they see people interacting with them and they, they get comfortable real fast. Howling Woods Farm offers tours by appointment. And word to the wise, their puppies are just as mischievous as yours. So leave that bag carrying your baseball hat in the car. In Jackson, I'm Maddie Orton, NJTV News. To share any story you've seen tonight, go to NJTVnews.org. I'm Mary Alice Williams. For all the men and women of NJTV News, happy Memorial Day. New Jersey manufacturers, auto insurance and more for New Jersey Business and Industry Association members and their employees. PSENG, serving customers, strengthening the business community and investing in New Jersey's future. And the members of the New Jersey Education Association, making public schools great for every child.